What is up, sisters and brothers and all my kind of friends? All my kind of friends out there. Y'all, I let Christian take the intro because he really wanted to throw in bros. So what is up, bros? Listening to this podcast, we have And she paid me $5 to do that. I did. I paid him five whole dollars to be on my podcast. Again. No, just to do the intro. Yeah, really, just for the intro. You couldn't afford me for the episode, but you could afford me for You that. are the biggest diva I've ever had on this show, by the way. <laughs> just hey, so you know. The ratings free- speak for themselves. <laughs> Whatever. Mom gets more ratings than you now. <laughs> well, that's not true. <laughs> that is true. That but is y'all talk about deep. Y'all talk. Y'all, y'all got y'all clickbait. Well, come on. Bring the deep. Bring y'all, the, y'all no, bring, we don't. We have quality content. Quality content. You our bring, content. You bring clickbait titles. Our content backs up all of our clickbait. Put when clickbait we, titles when we put in my sex episodes. in the title, we talked about sex, okay? Put clickbait titles in my podcast. In my episodes. Okay, I'll let you pick the title. <laughs> I'll let you pick the title. Skyrocket. I'll let you pick the title. Oh, my gosh. Y'all, every time we have Parker and Freddie, on this podcast we feel some kind of freedom to have arguments all throughout the morning Um, and this is part of it so we have parker and freddie back on the podcast because so many of you guys loved it last time we had them on they're two of our best friends and um we actually went to the dms and got a lot of relationship questions and questions that we felt were um kind of applicable to things we walked through in life we're talking about moving places talking about um just having the courage to make friends in new places and all also relationship stuff, but I thought we'd kick it off with a deep relationship question. Okay, so in all relationships, there are things in your relationship that it's like, it's like a hard step to cross over, right? It's like, this is a point in our relationship where someone's gonna have to break the ice, Mm -hmm. someone's gonna have to bring it up, someone's gonna have to go there, and it's always like, who's gonna do it? Well, my question is, how, when, and where did one of you fart for the first time? Hey, but that's a real story. thing. That's a real. <laughs> some people are <laughs> out there and they're uptight. Oh, they can't gosh. breathe properly because they're holding it all in. And they're like, "How do you break this ice?" We've all been there. Okay, you can go first, Christian. Well, I'm not. I'm not the best for answering this question because we're almost. What, like five years in? Yeah, but go back. Go but, back but I'm back. saying I've still never out loud farted in front of you in five years. Oh my gosh, that's the biggest lie ever. <laughs> that's, that's, morning, I know, no. maybe not today. <laughs> I actually, here's the thing. I actually fart in front of you so much, I don't remember the first time. I know. I've become so immune. I don't even laugh anymore, which is kind of weird. That's not true. You do laugh. <laughs> Sometimes. It depends on the tone. But not. <laughs> the length. <laughs> Sometimes the I laugh. The setting. Totally but the setting. it's not often. <laughs> most of the, oh and you know what? I was like the most like open person to that. I was just like, hey, like never hold back, that kind of thing. But now that we're married, I'm like, okay, actually stop. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like too far. But there is, there. so this might be too too much it probably is care. but for me there's a difference between like farting and like audibly like blowing up the bathroom like i still get nervous about like <laughs> like loud oh, poops you do you I do, do get nervous <laughs> i do you do you're well, like i don't know like, why but it's like i'll <laughs> fart so loud but then like in the bathroom i like there's something different <laughs> about like but it's so weird because they can't me. even see you in there. Yeah, but it's something about the door being shut and being like, I still hear it. <laughs> the <laughs> privacy makes it up. Down the hall, through the door. It's like, that's just embarrassing. I can't. So but Christian's I never really had that time. problem. <laughs> but I the, remember The first me, time Sadie fought I was me, really, I actually was so We were so sitting nervous. on a dock. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. I was so nervous because I have been like holding it in. So we started dating in July. This was May of the, well, we met in July. We started dating in September. This yeah. was May of the next year so i'm like time has passed you know and if you keep in mind you had been you had been strategically oh yeah well i mean everybody does everybody does it's not that (laughs) yeah it's not that you don't fart in front of it it's just like (laughs) do they know you did that's whenever it reaches the line yeah so and actually whenever i did it was such an accident that was so funny we were like sitting on a dock and overlooking the ocean one morning yeah we're about to go on a fishing yeah overlooking the ocean yeah but it was early which you know your bowels are always kind of yeah it was early 
And I don't even know how it happened. I was just like talking. And then all of a sudden it just like happened. And then I was like, whoa. And like, there was like no hiding it. And we both started laughing so much, but it was like so good. I was so thankful because like, okay, the ice is broken. Yeah. Like we're past this yeah. awkward part of our relationship. Yeah. Now I know some couples out there who are like, I will never do that in front of my spouse. And I don't know how you do that. I'm like that more power to you. But what what's y'all status? But I, I will say real quick, it was also kind of like the fart where you would thought a boat drove by because there's like, no, hey. you would not. <laughs> the dock, the dock, the dock was like. <laughs> I was like looking down at like the water to see if like a you know the, the boat did not obey the no, the no egg zone. Yeah, if no you want way. more listeners on this podcast with you on it, you better stop TMI. <laughs> that's not pe- that's real. That's relatable. I'm just kidding. People say, yeah, I've done that to a dog. Okay, before. well, I was that girl that I like tried to convince Parker that I don't fart. <laughs> oh, you're that girl. I was that was. girl. Oh, yeah. was but that? no, I she made was. it. I made it until engagement. Maybe so. Like I made it a long time. That is a Granted, long time. Our, we dated for what eight months. Mm-hmm. So like halfway through engagement. Is when I like couldn't hide it anymore. It was a hilarious story. One there night we went, time. we went to dinner with I actually don't my best friends and his wife. And we're like an Italian restaurant, really good in, in Auburn. So and embarrassing. Freddie's like, Oh, I'm sick. I don't feel good. And we like haven't been, we've been trying to get dinner with this couple for forever. He's like, Oh, my stomach just hurt. We like, I think we ended up having to leave early because. Well, I just wasn't talking. So like, I was in so much pain. I was like, <laughs> Oh, basically laying down in my chair. I was in so much pain. What is going on? And Parker was like mad because he's like, you're not talking to them. Like, it's my best friend. Like, why are you being so quiet? This is just first time you go to dinner with them. Yeah. Yeah. I remember getting dinner with (laughs) y'all. Second best friend. Second best friend. (laughs) Come to find out, her son was hurting so bad because she was holding in all her gas. Like, she would not fart at all around me to the point it literally made her sick. She didn't need dinner. She had to go home. We, she was nauseous. We, when we got in the car, <laughs> when we got in the car, I like I genuinely thought Parker was going to take me to the hospital because I also didn't know what was going on with my stomach. I didn't know oh, that I was came the reason. To that point. And then you like opened my car door, and while you're walking around, I farted and I felt a lot. <laughs> I bet you did. <laughs> hey, there's like this stubbornness and pride to a woman that's like I will it not. Is. And there, it almost... there's a lesson in all this. There's a lesson. So what the lesson is. The first time you two did it in front of us, farted, it was very <laughs> audibly loud, right? So if you take, if you retract six months, you could have started with like a squeak. <laughs> no. You know, you could have started with something subtle. Better. You could have started, but you two are holding it in for years and your poor stomach. Next time, next, it just, it's like a whoopee cushion. <laughs> Just go ahead and start. No, I'm saying that's my advice of like, if you're ever nervous, <laughs> just just embrace just, it. Yeah, just a little, like a little squeak. Oh just God. a little subtle toot. Right. <laughs> or well, else you're holding it for so loud. And then it's a, it's a Uh-oh. noticeably. And Freddie's like, I did squeak. It was not noticeable. No one remembers. Do you remember the first time? I really don't. We're at the lake. And we had made it all the way through en- dating and engagement. And I, like, I was, so I was really good. Whatever Parker would be like, oh, you just farted. I'd be like, no, I don't do that. Like, I was very quick to, like, oh deny that I did it. Lies. Well, <laughs> not lie. Just not, not lie. <laughs> not lie. Not um, lie. But we were at the lake, and we were outside, and we were just, we were in the middle of a really deep conversation. Oh, that's the worst. And I farted, and I didn't, like, like same thing. It just, like, kind of happened. <laughs> and Parker was like, I got really flustered, but Parker didn't even know I farted. I gave myself up. I was like, oh, I just farted. Like, I, I like, you know, said you it had so to quickly. Say it. And we just started dying laughing because it was literally the first time I farted. In a deep conversation. <laughs> Sometimes I think that, like, God gives you, like, why would we fart, right? I think God gave us that to, to laugh in hard times. Which, ready to help you. God. It says the average person... Oh. Farts thirty five hundred to seven thousand times per year. Oh my god, that's a lot. Just so there, just there just there throwing that it. number out she there. Some confidence. You okay. are potentially farting seven thousand times. A year. <laughs> so everybody it's tough does to it. disguise seven thousand. 
<laughs> I will say. That is true. That's that's true. All right, now that we spent 10 minutes on our uh, <laughs> gas issues, Literally. but we're giving freedom to people out there, that's okay? Right. There are that's girls true. who are about to drive to the hospital with stomach pains that's that just true. need to let it go. Yeah. And there are some mm-hmm. girls who are starting Stop a new idea. relationship. Just go ahead and let it out, as yeah. Christian said. A little, hey, what did you say, squeak? Just a little squeak. A little squeak. Hey, they didn't look at us any different. That's right. Or maybe yeah. you did. I didn't. Look at you any different. You still married me. Yep. So that's great. All right. This is a lot deeper of a conversation. And I have my phone out because um, all these questions were sent to us from you guys and the DMs. So we are taking it to the DMs because we want to make sure that we're answering questions that truly are relatable to y'all. I'm sure the first question, someone DM'd. We just (laughs) didn't find it. Um, But this is actually a really good question. And like I said, taking a little bit of a deeper turn. But it said, how do you mend trust that has been broken in dating phases or do you just let it go? In marriage, how do you maintain trust? And I'm sure we both have stories of trust being broken and mending it and all the things, but y'all wanna go first? Y'all, I don't know about where you live, but the weather has been so nice here in Louisiana. It's getting a little warmer, and so we're able to get back to some of our favorite activities like tennis and going on walks outside. It just feels so good. And those are just some of my favorite ways to stay active. And look, whenever you're out there being active, it is important to give your body everything it needs to be healthy. And that's why AG1 by Athletic Greens is so important to our family. Christian spends a lot of time working towards his fitness goals, as many of you know, and AG1 has really helped him get there. Also, has really help with recovery. We love that it's just one scoop a day packed with 75 vitamins and minerals and not a whole bunch of pills. And after trying AG1, Christian immediately noticed a boost in his energy and focus levels that lasted all day. And friends, it helps with stamina and gut health, which we all know that gut health really does matter. And if you don't know, it's a great way to learn that your gut health actually impacts your mental health. And so taking something like AG1 can just help you all over and um, it was designed with ease in mind so you can live healthier and better without having to do a lot. Making healthy choices really can't be that simple. AG1 fits so easily into our busy lifestyle. Even when traveling, AG1 comes in cute little travel packs that are super easy to just throw in your backpack and hit the road or get on a plane, whatever you need to do, because it's so easy to travel with them. My favorite thing from Athletic Greens is probably their vitamin D3 plus K2 liquid drops because I love vitamin D. It's so helpful uh, to me. It's always made me feel so much better. And this is like so simple. You just put a few drops in your drink or in your snack and also it has over 600 servings in every bottle so you won't be running out anytime soon it's great for your heart your bones your teeth just really overall health and if you're looking for an easier way to take supplements athletic greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin d and five free travel packs with your first purchase that's a heck of a deal y'all don't miss it so go to athleticgreens.com slash whoa that's athleticgreens.com slash whoa and check it out today Yeah, I was trying to think of um, in our dating relationship when trust was maybe rocky. Um, And I thought of that one time Mm -hmm. where I had a friend from like just we went on a mission trip together and he was a little bit older, truly was only a friend. Um, But when Parker and I started getting really serious, I had like he had called me and I had told him over the phone like, yeah, we're really serious. We're talking about Um, engagement coming up and in my eyes it was like this is just a friend you know Mm -hmm. this is nothing has never been more than a friend has been like almost like an older brother to me and when Parker found out he was really hurt obviously but it took me a little while of of just him explaining to me like why that was so hurtful and also I had to receive like okay I was in the wrong for that Mm -hmm. Um, and to rebuild trust in that moment it looked like cutting off communication with that person Mm -hmm. not to be like mean or you know Parker wasn't being rude to say like hey this would help our relationship this is what this looks like moving forward but it was like this is respectful to me this is respectful to our relationship and if we are going to get married like you don't need to have friends of the opposite sex that is more than our relationship like the four of us are friends and and that's Mm -hmm. great but never would go past that of like the four of us yeah you know and so that you needed call Christian just to catch up. Exactly. Yeah, there's a boundary. Yeah. There's yeah. such a boundary. That would be weird. That would be yeah. so strange. And yeah. even like I think all of us are really good at if I was to have to text Parker, I would text the both of you. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just respecting boundaries. people's yeah. relationships. Yeah. Sure. yeah. And I know for you, like 
that was really hurtful for you. I remember that whole day, like Mm -hmm. I actually had to go babysit that night. And I was so nervous because also in my mind, I was like, man, is he going to break up with me because of this? Like, how much did this hurt him? Um, And it made me really nervous. Mm -hmm. And I think it would have been really easy in those nerves to kind of shut down and defend myself. Mm -hmm. But I wanted our relationship to work so bad that I was willing to say, okay, I was in the wrong and I'm really sorry and I'm willing to do whatever needs to mend this trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like for both of us, we both had things that happened to us in our past that made trust difficult, Mm -hmm. right? Like in that situation, like I have past relationships where a similar thing happened, you know, much worse, right? Where I had been cheated on and and trust was broken. So it made that even more sensitive. Mm -hmm. So I think to your question, it makes it even more important to not just ignore it, but to make sure you're working on that. And then when you're dating, especially as an individual, like how I need to heal from that, why do I have trust issues? Because when you get to marriage, if you're still... I mean, you, obviously, you're still going to need to deal with trust and stuff like that. But the earlier on you can start working through those things, I think yeah, that yeah. really it's it really true. helps. Yeah, for sure. What you don't deal with in your dating relationships <clears throat> will go into your marriage. And yeah. I think so many people think, well, yeah. when we're married, I'll just trust him because I have the ring on my mm-hmm. finger because exactly. he's wearing the ring because exactly. people know we're married. But it doesn't work like that. When, if, have, or when I have a baby, it'll be. Yeah, you yeah. always think like in the next stage, mm-hmm. it'll like solidify us more to, right. yeah. to the world. And I won't be as jealous or I won't have trust issues. But th- those things come from such a deep place inside yeah. that putting a ring on your finger doesn't change everything. You know, yep. it's really about the relationship that you build and the trust that you build. And we had, you know, our Rocky, our Rocky one, which we've shared the story so many times, so I won't share the whole story. Yes. But I will share what came from that is like, who's in the wrong? <laughs> well, not necessarily. I was in the wrong too, for being so uptight about Who it, initiated but you were in the wrong Thank for you. not telling me Thank where you. you were at. Thank and you. then, um, lying about okay. the picture we did. We did. <laughs> so yes Let's just continue on hey that. i was i was trying to be nice though and say i was in the wrong too and and, and in some ways i was because i went crazy about it but i'll tell you also i went crazy about it because i was the same way as y'all like i had things in my past that had happened where you know the person who wouldn't tell me where they were and then i would literally see pictures of them on instagram taking pictures with girls at a bar because they recognized him yeah. as my boyfriend you know and 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 you know, more well-known people that had dated that they thought they could lie where they were at, but they are recognizable. So people post, people mm-hmm. talk we about it. We didn't have my friends back then. Yeah, but we didn't have my friends, but <laughs> find my friends was uh, your tagged photos on Instagram at the time. Yes, like, and so I would find out these things and it would be so hurtful <clears> because <throat> they would lie. They'd be like, oh, I'm studying. And then they would actually be there. And so whenever I saw that picture, it like was like, oh my gosh, like is he doing this to me? Is like can I trust him? And then it was really hard for me to gain trust back. And I was like so uptight. And remember the time that um yes, this, I remember that. This is so embarrassing. But I'll tell you, you like, Yeah. So yeah. this is like how like crazy you can go if you don't work out like your trust stuff. This was two months after we got engaged. Yes. So I honestly kinda had the thought of like She's got a ring on her finger, you know? Yeah, like, she, she knows, like... But at this point, we were way past... We, we were, were past way that past stuff. that yeah. stuff and whatnot. But still, like, it, I guess it just hit a nerve. So, most of the time, Christian would always, like, tell me where he was, what he's up to. And he just, like, forgot to tell me that, which is not a big deal. He didn't have to tell me this. Sadie did not text me back, like, two hours before. And I was with my family. So, we ended up going to dinner. And I did not tell her we were going to dinner. Because I was like, she didn't text him back. Like, she'll, t- like, when she texted him. totally reasonable. Like, There's nothing wrong with what he yeah. did. When nothing text, that you did was she, wrong. When you text me back, I'll say, hey, by the way, I'm going to dinner. Mm-hmm. But I didn't feel like, because I knew you were busy with your family. So I didn't feel yeah. like being like, hey, by the way, I'm going to dinner with my parents. Because, like, mm-hmm. I'm with my parents. And we actually didn't have a relationship where we had to tell each other everything. It wasn't no. even like that. So he did nothing wrong in this scenario. I'm just really pointing out the ugly that it that comes out of you whenever you don't fix your trust problems. Mm-hmm. So I look at my friends and I see Christians at like Bonefish Grill. Which I'm Grill. confused why you checked my friends before you texted me. I now. thought I did text you. But that's a, that's Anyways, I think I did text you. I think I think you've forgotten that part. That was like four years ago. I can scroll back. And look. <laughs> four years <laughs> back. Oh, it'll not. take you a year. <laughs> anyways, yeah, anyways, but it wasn't even Bonefish Grill. Like it was like the comments or wherever you were, but we were like, at them for sure. yes i didn't know that it was kind of like this like outdoor mm-hmm. shopping mall and i was just like 
freaked out immediately. I was like, what are you telling me? And like, I just assumed that you were with like friends from high school or like, like, I don't know why. Like my mind just like went there. No, okay. But I'm telling you, this is just what I know, my I, mind I went. You, I and I was just like, he didn't want to tell me because like he is back with like his old friends or like, mm-hmm. and like your cousins are awesome. But y'all can do like crazy stuff together. And I was just like, what are they doing? And why didn't he tell me? <laughs> but y'all can't. Y'all just like, y'all just funny, like funny stuff. But you know, you never know. So I was just like, what are they doing? And I just like freak out. And I was like way ridiculous. I like called you ridiculous amount of times. Like I think his parents were like worried that you were marrying me yeah. because at the, at that moment, not really, but they were like, "This is a problem. Like, yeah. Y'all need to yeah. y'all need to fix this." And I was just like, "Man, honestly, like I just really have a trust problem. Like this has happened in my past. I'm so scared of this happening again. You would think that like having a ring on my finger would help me, but it actually makes me more nervous because mm-hmm. now I'm about to step into a lifetime with you. Like, is there something I'm missing? Like I was like mm-hmm. seeking like the thing that was gonna be like." That's it. Yeah. Like, that's the problem. Where right. This is the thing. When there was nothing wrong, like, you had given me every reason to trust you. You had been honest with me. You had been open with me. Uh, there's no reason for that. And that really kind of woke me up to, like, I need to get help. Because mm-hmm. for the longest time, like, with trust, you can blame it on the other person. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times it really is you. Yeah. And it really is your past stuff. And so mm-hmm. we worked through a lot of that. And our premarital counseling was awesome. And we, like, really went there and worked through past relationships mm-hmm. and family stuff and whatnot and it set us up for success and honestly I'm a I don't think I mean I think throughout our marriage I've been super trusting I haven't been like a jealous wife a distrusting wife I mm-hmm. have really trusted you the whole time and it's not because we got married it's because oh, yeah. we worked on those things yeah, and so to be two months engaged and be that bad and then, then to seven in marriage and be this healthy mm-hmm. I think that shows that you really can change yeah, yeah. but I will say to even like with both of our stories um, you know, like with you having some of those issues and like with the, when you having some of those issues, it also took like this from what we just shared, like me and Freddie, like we had to be consistent after that point. If like two weeks later, Freddie did, did the same thing, then it would have yeah. been like, oh, well, clearly you did not receive the message when I was like, hey, this actually really hurts my feelings. And same thing with you. If it's like, mm-hmm. if I didn't tell you again where I was at and you saw it again or whatever, then it's like, well, clearly he didn't take me that seriously. So there comes a point where after this yeah, breach of yeah, trust, yeah. like there has to be a consistent pattern of like mm-hmm. acknowledging what the other person needs to mend what mm-hmm. was, you know, like, I guess you could say fractured in a moment. Um, Cause then like, like you said, with defensive, like I have a problem with being defensive. So I could have gotten, well, I kind of did get defensive in that moment, but I could have stayed defensive to where it's like, you know, I don't really acknowledge that. Yes, I was in the wrong when I did this and just keep having like those walls up to mm-hmm. where I kind of don't take, maybe don't take what you said as seriously as, as, as it was kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So I think just having consistent patterns after you, you know, kind of breach that trust and to mend it back because mm-hmm. That's good. You can always have a that outlook of like, well, you should just trust me. But it's yeah. like, if I'm not displaying patterns of trustworthy behavior, then you're not going to just trust me because I'm telling you to trust me. Yes. Right. You know, I love my sleep, but sleep can be come and go whenever you have a almost two year old and a baby on the way. I feel like I wake up a lot, but it's so fun to get to track my sleep. And that is why I love my aura ring. I have it on right now. This gold ring looks like a super cute, simple little ring, but man, it makes a ton of difference when it comes to your health and wellness. You get all the details going on in your life. And right now is the perfect time to get one because you can get $15 off your aura ring at auraring.com slash woe. So Aura Ring has advanced sensor technology that tracks your heart rate, calories burned, and activity levels during the day. But at night, it also monitors your body temperature trends, sleep quality, respiratory rate, and more. So maintaining healthy habits are always super important in our house, but especially during pregnancy. I want to make sure that I'm doing all that I can, you know, to hit some good health goals and wellness goals. And that does, that looks a lot different during pregnancy than it does in other seasons of my life. But the Aura Ring can help me know what's kind of going on. The Aura Ring delivers accurate personalized health insights with the Aura app, which is so easy to use. It gives information that's unique to me and my body, so I know exactly where I need to make adjustments or improvements. And it's really cool to see Christian's stats and my stats and just the difference in our bodies and um, how they work. So it's pretty cool. Plus, the ring is really cute. Like I said, it comes in two styles and five colors to fit your style. It's comfortable to wear. It's not too bulky or boxy. Like I said, I'm wearing it right now. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. It's 
also water resistant so you don't have to take it off every time you wash your hands or take a shower. The Aura Ring has just been awesome for me and Christian. Also, my mom loves it too. I got her the Aura Ring for Christmas and it was one of the best gifts I've ever given. I'm not going to lie. She was super excited about it and has been wearing it ever since and loving it. So don't wait, y'all. Visit AuraRing.com slash woe to find the right ring for you and get $15 off your first purchase. That's AuraRing.com slash woe. And don't forget to use our link to save $15 off your Aura Ring today. I've been in relationships where words like you should just trust me or I'm sorry, like lose its power because I'm like, well, I can't trust you because you've given me no reason to, or you say you're sorry, but I know you're going to do it again tomorrow. Like, you know, so words matter and they carry weight and you have to see the action behind them. And I love that you said that about, it does go both ways with trust. Like for the person that broke trust, you have to be intentional about mending the trust. For the person that's trust was broken, you have to be intentional about forgiving. And yeah. mm-hmm. I, I love that verse. It's like very convicting where it says, love keeps no record of wrong. You know, there comes a point where it's like, I can't keep bringing this up. Like right. a broken record. We call honey a broken record right now because if she says a sentence, she'll say it 10 more times. It's like the first time <laughs> she's ever said bracelet. And she's like, bracelet, 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 bracelet. And I'm like, oh my gosh. But like, that's how we are in really relationships yeah. sometimes they're like yeah. you did this you didn't tell me where you, were. you didn't tell me where it's like i get it you, i didn't tell you where i was you know but like mm-hmm. stop bringing it up again like when are you going to forgive mm-hmm. you know and so i think it does it's go good. both ways yeah it's good and it's not controlling either i think yeah. like when the person that has the trust that's been broken on their end to like ask for okay can you text me okay can you not cut off conver- conversation with that person it's not like out of a controlling heart it's out of like this is my need like what you're saying Krishna that's so good mm-hmm. yeah I love that because that's the thing like if, if I was literally you have to always tell me where you're at that gets controlling yeah but if I'm like hey if you're going to something that you know I would want to know about you know mm-hmm. if there's gonna be girls there that are our age or whatever like um, even which like, even the, which now we're not, yeah. but in college, yeah. it was like, totally. you know, not even parties, but just like hangouts. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I just want to know, like bonfires, just let me know, yeah. you know, and you always let me know about those things. And mm-hmm. so it shouldn't have bothered me when you're there at dinner with your family, but that just shows you how deep something can be. Um, and sometimes find my friends not completely accurate. So. It's true. It did <laughs> not say bone fish. You're better at that, Apple. I know. When it said bone fish, <laughs> maybe I wouldn't have freaked out. Figure it out. I needed to get that ugly out so we could work on it. Mm-hmm. All right, so now we're going to move on to literally talking about moving because a lot of people, um, especially in their 20s, are in times of their life where they're having to move or have just moved. And not just 20s, all ages, mm-hmm. but particularly people our age. And we've all had to move, you know. Uh, I've moved to Nashville, moved to Auburn, we moved back here. You guys have moved, you moved from Dallas to Auburn mm-hmm. to Monroe, you moved to Monroe, you've moved, we've all moved, okay? Mm-hmm. So we know the challenges with moving and the excitement of moving, all of it. Yeah. So I wanna ask y'all, um, when you got to the point of moving, whether it was to Auburn or to here, um, did y'all have like a piece to go there? What made y'all be like, okay, I can make this decision to to make this giant step of moving somewhere? Yeah, I would say I definitely had peace about it, but at the same time, I still felt like there's still the fear, like, oh, okay, I gotta leave. Like for me, it was my hometown, everything that I love, the church, friends, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So yes, I knew God was clearly calling us here. That was very clear to me. And he's continuing to affirm that, but mm-hmm. it was still hard. So, yeah. like I know we said before, it's this is also you feel that uneasiness doesn't mean it's not what God's calling you to. Do. Yes, you can have sure. that peace from Him, but then also have like, hey, we're humans. We're gonna mm-hmm. struggle with fear or questioning, like what's going on. Yep. Yeah. So that's how I feel about yeah. it. coming here at least. And it definitely didn't happen overnight that we felt peace about it. Definitely. Like I think. And it was also very different for both of us to getting to the place of peace. Mm-hmm. I felt peace way before Parker did. And I had to sit on that and not convince him that the Lord was telling us. Like I had to wait for the Lord to reveal that to Parker in his own time because I knew if it really was the Lord speaking to me, he would also speak that to Parker. And I think that made it even more affirming because it wasn't like I was trying to convince Parker, this is what the Lord's telling us to do. Like he also had that peace. And for us to, what was it, six months of Mm. like really wrestling. Like it took a while. And I think that's something that you don't want to take a while is like the Lord telling you where to go and Mm -hmm. where to move to. But I'm glad it did because we were so in tune with what he said 
in Auburn Mm -hmm. that we have gotten that confirmation Mm -hmm. even being here. Yep. It's so good that you take that time because then once you get here and you go through some of those shaky times and just the heartache of and the reality of, oh, I just moved, knowing mm-hmm. like, okay, we took six months to think about this, to yeah. about this. It wasn't like a rash decision. Right. And some some moves are rash decisions because you got a job and they needed you next yeah. week, you know, yeah, and, and that's one thing. That's but just to be able to have that affirmation of like, I'm supposed to be here is mm-hmm. so good. And I love what you said that just because you had peace doesn't mean you didn't also have like sadness. And I think that, and, and fear, mm-hmm. because I think some people are like, oh, well, if I feel fear, feel sad, or if it feels heavy, like, is that yeah. really God? But yes, like, that's being human, yeah. mm-hmm. you know? And um, I know y'all have talked about it. Um, Freddie, we talked about this a little bit, but it was almost like you had this initial piece of like, yes, like I'm going. And then you got here and it was like the reality of, oh, I'm in like a new place. Yeah. So how do you stay planted in the times of um, where it doesn't like feel good and exciting? Yeah. It's really hard, honestly, because when you, for me moving here, it was like the newness and the excitement and the new job and the new friends. And we're in a mm-hmm. house, like all these fun, exciting things. And then a couple months go by and like the newness wears off. And then it's like, okay, this is this is home now and how do you make it home? And Parker really just had to continue to, cause he didn't have that experience. He was like pretty steady. He's really steady. I'm not as steady, but he was like, classic. he was like you, yeah. Um, you need to like continue to just be all in and not be so reserved. And we kind of touched on that, but you really encouraged me to just, like you said, be all in and not yeah. dip your toe in the water. Yeah. Which I think is key to moving. You really Absolutely. do have to be all in because, you know, we've had people move here for jobs and move away rather quickly. And I think it comes from this place of like they never were all in. Mm-hmm. If you come here like complaining about something, then I feel like those complaints, like that's just all you can see. And we talked mm-hmm. about this. Like it's okay to be real. Like, hey, mm-hmm. this is the reality of where I'm at. But it's different when you're like saying like, oh, this is the reality of where I'm at. And this is me complaining yeah. with where I'm at. Yes. Because there's a true yeah. reality to this is hard or this is sad or I miss my friends or this feels new or Mm -hmm. you know this feels mundane now in certain sense and then there's a difference in being like you know I hate the I hate the grocery stores here I hate the this I hate the that and like some of it's funny and you can joke about that and this is true we don't have good grocery stores here (laughs) but (laughs) that is true (laughs) but the more you get fixated on that then it's like well if I lived here then I wouldn't Mm -hmm. have to then I could have Trader Joe's or if I lived here then I could have this and I've lived here and the more you think about that and that will get you to literally moving from here you know and it's like you miss all the like joys of where you're at of Mm -hmm. like whoa like I forgot why did I move here in the first place not for that I moved here because this is where God had me you know and so I think it is important not to like get fixated on all the negatives of where you're at and just try to focus on the positive Mm -hmm. but I get asked all the time how does Christian feel about living in Monroe and if you would have rather lived somewhere else that's good I did not know that you got many questions I actually do people ask me that all the time well people don't know so when I was young I actually moved from Niceville to Destin back to Niceville (laughs) And then I moved wow. from Niceville to Auburn. And then By Auburn, the way, if you don't know Niceville to Destin, that's about a 20-minute drive. They're like so. right next to each other. <laughs> and then I moved from Auburn to here. But my, I mean, it's so even like when I went to college, I was leaving my family, which I, which I, which was tough because I was super close with them. But I was like three hours away from them. I had no friends from like left from high school, really. So it wasn't like I was leaving these friendships where I'm like, oh, I'm going to miss my friends. So I didn't like have any friends post high school. Um, so when I got to college, it took me, it took me a little bit to get in, plugged in, in like a good community. So that was kind of crazy when I first got to college. <laughs> and then post college, I mean, I, I really, I really don't know if my moving experience would be different moving here. Like if COVID was never a thing, like if I graduated and then moved here when life was still normal, mm-hmm. you know, cause when we moved here, we moved here in March, right when COVID hit. And it was like life in Auburn I think would have felt the same as it did moving here and the same like life in Florida would have felt the same because you weren't leaving your house. You couldn't travel. You weren't doing anything. And everybody was in the same boat. And everyone in the world. All your friends from Auburn were also in in their houses. Like billions of people were in the same boat, like quarantining, don't like not leaving. Um, And I'm very like, like Freddie said about Parker, I'm a very consistent person. So even like when COVID 
kind of became not like not a thing and everything was kind of lifted. If I like have a gym that I like, a coffee shop I like, and a restaurant that I like, I'm very content. It's true. I struggled more moving back here than you like, did. Like everything feels the same for me. Yeah. If I'm like, I got like every day I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to probably go to the same I'm probably going to get a Chick-fil-A. He's always like, what am I going to eat for lunch today? I'm like, are you kidding? And like, I'm probably going to go to the same, to the same like, coffee shop. I'm very like routine. So it's not like if I have my things, it, it feels the same wh- wh- whatever yeah. city I'm in kind of thing. But it did take us because obviously we got really close with your family when we first moved here because that was really all you could do. And we didn't have much community outside mm-hmm. of that. It took about a year like when we actually started having Bible studies and stuff. But I don't know. I'm like... I could be hanging out with a ton of people or just you. And yeah, I'm, you're I'm, consistent with that. Very Maybe it's a girl know. thing that yeah. it's a little bit harder because I you would I always said this and people ask me that question. I'm like, honestly, he was better about it than I was. And I, I, I guess because, I don't know, whenever I lived in Nashville, I really thought I was probably going to be there for the long run because my work was there, my team was there, my friends were there. Um, it didn't feel super far from home, even though it was. I mean, I guess it was like seven and a half hour drive and a flight, two flights. But um, I don't know, it still just felt like the South and yeah. didn't feel like that mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden I just kind of started feeling not like that was going to be home forever. When, I, when we moved to Auburn, we both started feeling a little bit more drawn to moving to West Monroe, which we had previously talked about um, living in Asheville. And then we both kind of started feeling called to Monroe when you actually said that before I even did, too, which helped me. I was like, OK, wow, this is crazy. And we both felt that like deeply in us. It was more than just like, oh, we want to move to Monroe. It was almost like we felt very um like pushed to move to monroe and in a good way we're like oh this something there's Mm -hmm. something there that we want to be a part of that we want to pray into that we want to believe for and there was a it actually made more sense maybe to be in nashville and i was thinking about this last night with god that normally it's the thing that doesn't make sense that god's in Mm -hmm. and the thing that does make sense and there's like there's sometimes where you look at things you're like, well, this just makes more sense. Mm. And it's normally the thing that doesn't make as much yeah. sense. Absolutely. Um, because I think if you feel a call towards something that doesn't make sense, that I'm like, why would that not be God? Yeah. You know, yeah. like, because that's not me. Like, this yeah. is not me. Yep. And so we move here and we, you know, face, like Christian said, it took about a year to make friends. And that was really hard for me because I love friendships. I love community. And um, that just felt hard you know and i remember telling my parents it's like i don't know if we're ever going to make friends here like i don't know how to make friends like we've tried put ourselves out there we got plugged into the young adult ministry at church and it just like wasn't happening at all it always felt a little bit forced and then all of a sudden we started praying for that i mean we prayed for that and then god just kind of brought it like um you guys moved here some of our um one of our friends married one of my friends, you know, Reeves and Lydia, and some of you guys know Reeves and Lydia from the podcast, and then Grace and Bryant, Bella and Jay, it just kind of like happened, and it was so sweet, and I and I feel like sometimes it's like we move before it gets good, you know, you have to stay planted somewhere, you have to water the ground, let the, let the roots grow, and when I think back to like the year of us not having a lot of friends, we spent so much time together, which in hindsight was really sweet, especially since we had um, honey so fast in our marriage. Like mm-hmm. it was really sweet to have that year together and all of our pictures of our dates that we did during quarantine and stuff. It's like, okay, that's actually really sweet. Yeah. So again, like not focusing on, oh, I don't have friends, but mm-hmm. focusing on like, what do I have in this? Yeah. But that can be hard. And for all of those who are listening who don't have community, we're not saying that's not hard, yeah. but yeah. the being patient and praying and stuff, God really does just kind of mm-hmm. have a way of everything working out. Yeah. Um, okay, so someone asked a great question. We both do this in our homes, and someone said, how to host a Bible study for your friend group in your home. Freddie is the hostess with the mostest. Yeah, she, she throws tries. a good party. So I love love tell us what hosting looks like for y'all. I love hosting. I've always loved hosting. It involves sweets. It always involves sweets. <laughs> That's really how you should. get people into your home. That's right. Um, food and community is a good combo. But I really... This sounds funny, but it's so practical for me. Like when I 
ask people to come over or we're hosting. It's like, I want them to feel at home. And that doesn't mean like everything needs to be perfectly clean. It just needs to be comfortable. That's like, good. I just want people to feel mm -hmm. comfortable. And if they have a lot going on, they can open up. Or if they just want to like goof around, we can just goof around. You know, it's like, there's no set way to host people, yeah. but it's just creating an environment in a space where whatever needs to happen can happen and yeah. just like allowing the Lord to kind of have that. But I also love like taking care of people that way. Like I love having cookies when people come over. Chocolate <laughs> chip cookies. Yep. Parker loves that. Yeah. And you make some good cookies. <laughs> Yeah, Christian's great. always like, uh, do you think Freddie will make cookies when she comes <laughs> over? I'm like, you can ask Probably. her. And that's like, Very people likely. always are like, you don't have to if you don't want to. Parker's dad is always like, you don't have to, but if you want to. And the thing is, is I genuinely love it because <laughs> yeah. I just love, like, I love doing that for people. It's like yeah. a way for me to bless people and mm -hmm. like a love language for me to love others is like, provide them with cookies, as yeah. funny as it sounds. Well, it always but, makes people happy. Everybody wants yeah, a cookie. exactly. Yeah. I love that. That is practical. And it, that, I think that's the thing with hosting. Like, don't overcomplicate it. Yeah. Like, be practical about it. Make cookies. Invite people over. You don't have to have a perfectly clean house but a comfortable home. Yeah. It's like mm -hmm. what people just, people just want to come hang. Yeah. People right. just want to hang. Yeah. yeah. And Parker, you're good at getting the grill going. Yeah. I like to, I like to grill. Everybody, everybody likes a good steak or some uh -huh. chicken and things like that. And our pastor from Oliver Miles, he always talks about like communities, like common memory with other people, mm -hmm. you know? So I just like, Let's just come over and like a memory doesn't have to be some crazy trip we go on, you know, it can just be, yeah. hey, we came and hung out together. And because we did that, somebody ended up opening up and we mm -hmm. prayed for them or whatever that is. And so kind of like what you were saying, it it takes time to get that. Like if you move somewhere and you're there for six months, you're probably not going to have many memories with people because yeah. it's mm -hmm. just a short amount of time. But yeah. if you actually commit, I mean, to me, practically, if you, you have to give it at least a year of mm -hmm. doing that to really give it yes, a good shot. It's yeah. true. And I will say too, even like with doing a Bible study, I think there's a beautiful thing about like having something planned, but then also just kind of like letting the night happen. Yeah. Like we have a Bible study every Wednesday and I would say 75% of the time we do a Bible study and the 25% it's like, we end up having deep, <laughs> deep conversations about something or else just goofy. or we just end up playing a game in the house and just doing life with one another. So I think sometimes we can kind of be rigid with it, like, oh, this is Bible study tonight, and it's going to be all about Bible study. And it can be less about community and more about, like, the Bible, which is an awesome thing. But sometimes it can feel, like like you said, forced or kind of mm -hmm. like you're rigid. you're rigid with it. Instead of, like, just doing life with one another, then it's like, oh, yeah, we're doing Bible study. Yeah. Uh, like, sometimes we won't start a Bible study until, like, 10 o'clock or 9.30, and it's like, this is a little late because everyone got here at 6.37, whatever. But it's just the fun part of doing life, and I think sometimes like... Fellowship. Yes, it's fellowship. Yes, you host a Bible study, and if you do the Bible study, awesome, but also it's not like the night, you know, you chalk it up as a loss if you don't study the Bible, if mm -hmm. you end up just having deep conversations. Yeah, and it's a good thing about hosting, too. Like, don't put too much expectation on what it has to happen mm -hmm. when your friends are over. Yeah. Just, like, let it happen. And I think with our Bible study, ours is really simple because we don't try to put too much pressure on anybody. And so yeah. we watch a sermon. It's, like, that simple on YouTube. We pull it up, and then we talk about it, and then we pray together. And it's, like, really powerful. But then some nights we are just, like, more goofy. And I love what you shared about. It's, like, a co common memories. And I think it's some of our, like, memories and... Like we have a group text and it's literally called Mary J. Blige. And every time I just like see it pop up, it makes me laugh so hard because of one night we were yeah. watching TikToks of like when they were doing that thing. It was like so-and-so died and the moms would freak out and all these people were like, Mary J. Blige died. <laughs> and they're like, not Mary. And we thought it was like so funny. But, like Some of those memories are just like the best where you just start yeah. laughing together. And I will say like for friendships, one thing that I've found like really helpful is don't compare like your new friendships to your old friendships mm. because you have to remember your old friendships, you had time with them. Yeah. And so I think sometimes it's like, you know, I'm coming from these five-year friendships, four-year friendships from college. Mm. Then you move and you know someone for a month and you're like, why aren't we hitting it yeah. off? It's like, because right. you just met them. Yeah. <laughs> like, because yeah. you People just started really. hanging yeah. out with them, you know? And, um, you know, when I think back to how those other friendships started, I'm like, oh, that's sort of the same way, you mm. know? And we've all gotten so comfortable with each other. We've kind of like hit that mark. But I do feel like it does take time and all it's right. so important you don't compare what you're coming yes. from to where you're at because that's not that's not fair to anyone to put that expectation on them 
And I'm so guilty of that. I do have to admit, I am that person that I just, obviously I'm a counselor. Like that's just part of my nature. Parker always says like, I'm more deep than the average person just because like, that's what I yeah. love. So it is hard for me because I'm like, well, we didn't have the deepest conversation the second time we hung out. And so we must not have a friendship, <laughs> yeah. but I really do just have to like s slow, slow down and say yeah. to myself, like I've had conversations with friends from college and she, one of my friends, Maggie, she made a really good point. She was like, your friends in college were not only your friends, they were your sisters, they were your moms, they were every part of your community yes. and you lived with them. Like yeah. they went through heartbreak with you. They went through yeah. transitioning to a new place and a new town and it, like all these new things. And so you can't expect that to look mm -hmm. the same in marriage mm -hmm. because you have that with your mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say that friendships aren't important. Friendships are so important, but just your need of them does change yes. and that's okay. And yes. I think that's hard post-grad to realize that, but even more so when you add like mm -hmm. all of your friends getting married after college, that right. also brings a new challenge yes. too. That is so true because different season friendships are going to look different ways. You know, when you get married, that's so true. It's like your friendships are going to look the same as when you lived with all your mm -hmm. girlfriends. That's so different. Or yeah. when you live with your guys and it's like the same when you have a baby, it's like, then yeah. that adds a whole new element to it. And so, yes, friendships are important, but as far as like the priority of time you spend with your friends, mm -hmm. well, your husband begins to take that place and your mm -hmm. kids begin to take that place. And then, you know, you add that because it's beautiful and yeah. you need that and you love that, um, but it is just different than it used to be, you know, mm -hmm. and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that was pr more so the struggle in the first year is I was like, why do I not have these friends? Like I just came from, but it's because I lived with those friends and yeah. like, you're my friend, you know? And yeah. so you just have to like, you not put the pressure on yourself mm -hmm. to like maintain all these relationships, you know? But man, anybody else have anything to add? I feel like this is a good conversation. Mm -hmm. Great. Whoa, that was really good. Whoa, that was good. <laughs> Whoa, that's good. We laughed, we cried, we had yeah. all the variety. As Jason Aldean once said, we laughed until we cried. We laughed until we did do that. <laughs> well, I hope that you guys enjoyed this podcast. And uh, as always, Parker and Freddie, we love having you on the yeah. podcast. This is so fun. And we'll continue to have them on. And so keep sending in questions that you have for them um, as we continue on having them on, whether it's about relationships, moving, friendships. Freddie's a counselor, so you can go deep. You can ask any question you want to her. I like to hit her with some hard yeah. stuff sometimes too. I love it. And so we hope that you guys have a great week. I hope this was a great start to your week and we love you. Friendships, farts, faith, and fighting. <laughs> Is that your clickbait? Yeah. <laughs>